What is up YouTube? How's everybody out there doing today? I hope you guys are having a great day. And uh, well, here's a tow truck right here. We're gonna talk about why this flatbed tow truck is in the shop. <sighs> As you can see, there's a lot of shit taken apart here. Um, a lot of shit. Um, a lot more shit there. Yeah. This is fun. This is real fun. I just want to tell everybody how much fun I'm having. But uh, as you can see, I actually have my buddy's tow truck in here, Saver Towing and uh, Transport LLC right here. Right there. Um, and he was like, hey, Andy, he's like, you want to do me a favor? You want to hook a brother up and do some front brakes and some rear brakes and some calipers and some rotors and some e-brakes and some bearings and some seals and some everything on my tow truck. I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. I'll go bust it out in a day for you. No big deal. So we already have the front done. So that was a mess, you know. I don't know if you guys know anything about front dually brakes, but uh, there's a hub in there that's got to come off. But we already did front calipers, brakes, rotors, brackets. Good to go. Good to go. Front's done. Front's working phenomenal. So now we're on to the back. And this is what it looks like. I wasn't even going to make a video about this, but I was like, you know what? I I'm going to do it. So this side is already apart. Okay. This side is already apart. Everything's apart except for the seal. I gotta take the seal out and the bearing. So I'm gonna show you guys how to properly grease uh, bearings, which is them guys right there. And, uh, but basically what we're gonna do is since this side's apart, I did start to take the other side apart, but uh, I'm gonna show you what's all done here. All right, so this side's somewhat apart already. I've already got the brake caliper off, the brake pads out, and I have my front axle off as well which is right here, that big long thing, that goes in this big long differential. So the next step we gotta do, we gotta do two different things. Here's something I found on the web. According to kstate.edu, summers go time for those of us involved in agriculture. My, my phone heard me and uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, back at it. Calipers off, we gotta take, uh, these two big bolts off right here, these are an inch and three sixteenths and they are in there like a bandit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our good old jack here and our, where is our wrench? We have a, a wrench as well and we're gonna break it loose using the jack because these are torqued down to like 200 foot pounds. We're gonna break both them bolts loose and then get them out by hand and then take that bracket off. And before you asked, Andy, why don't you just use an electric gun or an air gun to take off? Because no half inch gun is gonna take them bolts out. Believe me when I tell you guys, I already did them on the front of this thing and you either gotta torque them out with a wrench like this, or you have to put a long extension on um, a freaking uh, socket. But one of the reasons why you can't put a socket, you can put a socket on the bottom one, the top one, there's not enough room for a socket and a ratchet, so that's why you gotta use the wrench. So basically what we'll do is we'll take this guy like this, we'll put it right there, and then we're gonna jack up on here. It's all about leverage. Breaking loose. There we go, now it's breaking loose. That took a little bit. Top one's loose, and uh, now we're onto the bottom one here, which luckily for me, I just have to get this under here, which ain't a big deal. Made it a lot easier than this, technically. <sighs> Come on, baby. There we go. Basically, what we gotta do is just break it loose. Whew. Either that or we're gonna break the wrench, one or the other. fun part of the job. Yeah. 
That's how big them bolts are right there. I hope you guys can see them. Yeah, this is three and a quarter inch big socket. That's gonna go on here like so. And then all you gotta do is give it a little twist and she comes off. There we go. You take this nut off and it is keyed. And that's what it looks like right there basically. Has little teeth on the back side. Right there like that. And then here's our bearing. That goes there. And then this guy here goes on that rag right there. And that's how you remove a brake rotor from a 5500 Dodge Ram tow truck. Yeah, that's how you do it right there. So the next thing we gotta do is there's these star bits in here. We're gonna use a 15 now. We're gonna take this off and we're gonna hit this rotor off of the actual hub assembly right there. Boom, boom. These are actually star bits, but you can use a 15 too, it works just the same. The rotor is apart from the actual hub. So the next thing we gotta do is we gotta get both seals out and clean up all this stuff. We're doing the drum brakes as well because they're trashed. We got a whole new hardware kit and everything for that. So yeah seals and then i'll show you how to do the bearings but um basically i'm going to get all the drum brake stuff done first get that situated once that's situated then we'll move on to the hub here guys one side of the drum brakes is done all new springs adjusters you guys are probably like man who does drum brakes anymore nowadays oh i do because i learned how to do drum brakes when i was young and now i know how to do drum brakes now they're essentially all the same that's basically what it looks like all brand new stuff you have a back spring a front spring and then you have a tensioner spring down here your little keepers and rods and your pads and this is what the old setup looked like um well it looks like this is upside down so everything's in reverse which is fine uh, which is going to make it a little bit easier honestly to put this thing together but we got to take this all apart and put all the new parts on this one now and we should be good all right so we have our seal and our back bearing out we have our front bearing over there which we're gonna eventually take over to the table it's nice and dark out now but uh let's go over to the table and i'm gonna show you guys i'm gonna show you guys how to uh, basically grease these bearings and put grease in them properly properly all right so hopefully you guys can see me this is a messy job. This is not the funnest thing to do, but we have our grease right here, bearing grease. And basically it's really, really no easy way around it. You just get your hand in there like so. <laughs> and you start basically feeding it into the bearings like this is how you want to do it. Because you want to feed it through the bearings there and you want to get that grease in there real good. That way, yeah, like that, yeah, yeah, and go all the way around, and listen, the one thing they taught us, there's no such thing as too much lube, guys, believe me, take it from me, not enough of lube, there's never, never, never a thing as a thing as too much lube, you can never have too much lubrication. Get it in there nice and good. Oh. Yeah. I already cleaned this race up, so that's all cleaned up. Basically, that bearing just goes right in there. And then we go ahead and we put our seal in. So we'll go ahead and get our seal in. I'll show you what it looks like with the brand new seal in, guys. Alrighty. And that's what it looks like with the seal fully seated 
and the bearing. Now we got to do is put the uh, rotor on now. So one thing I do obviously is I spray down the rotor with some brake clean. Put it on. Now it's going to line up with certain holes. Put them back in like so. Now these get torqued to 114 foot-pounds. And you're probably wondering how the hell are you going to torque that to 114 foot-pounds these little bolts here when all it's going to do is turn on you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've discovered a trick from the other side. Uh, the other side of the truck because I finished that already. You're actually seeing this this side finished up here. But this works just fine. Works just fine. Alrighty, now we torque it down. Alright, so I have my pry bar here in between my legs and on the uh, lug nuts or lug studs underneath. So that's going to hold it in place while I torque all these down, which is going to be just so much fun. There's that one. Yep. All right. All torqued down. Now it goes on there. Now, you definitely have to be careful of, let's hook this somewhere here. Up, up here somewhere, I don't know. There, you definitely have to be careful of this lip seal and the seal in here, not to cut it on any of this uh, stuff here. So, this is like 100 pounds, so it's heavy as hell. But you're gonna watch me do it. It's gonna suck. Alrighty, so just need a little finesse, that's all. But she's on there now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grease up this bearing, clean it up, grease it up, and that guy goes right in there. So let's put some grease on this thing. So we have our bearing in, and this here is our lock nut that goes on the end. So, Clean that up a little bit here, make it look pretty again. It's just oil, it's not gonna hurt anything. We'll go ahead and take this bearing, shove that in there. And then there's a keyway here, and there's a keyway right there. They both line up. It's literally idiot proof, to be honest. And you screw it in, just like so. Now for anybody wondering, this is a 2012 Dodge Ram 5500 tow truck. You guys are probably like, well, what year and mic and model y'all working on there, Randy? Well, this is what I'm working on. Basically, you're just going to screw this in. There's a weird torque spec for this. I'm going to show you guys what it is. You can hear it. It's like a self-locking nut setup. It's really awkward, to be honest, but it works, so fuck it, whatever. Now, obviously, the easy way to torque this down without the wheel moving is, you know how it goes, guys. Pretty little pry bar in there and then let's take this off of here our good old nut okay so the torque spec on this is 70 foot pounds initially so set this guy to 70 foot pounds okay here we go 70 foot pounds here we go right there and then what they tell you to do which is fucking weird is they tell you to take it 90 degrees and loosen it back up again 90 degrees and then they say to torque it down to 30 foot pounds so and that's supposedly the specs on this that's what I found out which is weird but hey whatever I guess it's just a seat the bearing, I don't know. And that's 30, 32. Double check it. There you go. And according to everything that I found out, 
that is what it's supposed to be torqued down to. That's weird to me, but that's what it's supposed to be. So now let's get the axle in. Okay, time to put my axle in. There's an O-ring on the end of this. You probably should replace it, but we didn't replace ours, so it doesn't matter. So, you're definitely gonna have to like fiddle around with this thing to get it in the splines. It's not gonna be happy about it, I can tell you that. So these bolts get torqued down to 98 foot pounds. There we go. Alright. Nothing else matters. So you can't I found a way to get a socket in here, by the way. Mike <laughs> goes in there. And then this. Here's some big ass bolts. Don't ask me why, but for some reason, this bottom bolt needs to be torqued to 190. I don't even know why. But the pop one goes to 163. There we go. I lube up my brake pads with some anti-seize. And then I already got my sliders in place. So we just gotta push them there where they belong. I always put the um, the indicator, the, the the thickness indicator, the little thing that squeals when the brakes are low. I always put that on the back as I drop my freaking slider out of my shit. Oh, here we go. Make sure my hands aren't grimy with all that. Oh, come on, babe. Oh, come on. Now it's going to fight me over something so stupid. Come on, get in there. Got time for you. There we go. Then we go ahead and we take our brand new caliper, squeeze our brake pads together. And voila, brand new caliper and bracket, brand new rotors on this bad boy. Now what we'll do is we'll just switch, we'll tighten this down and we'll switch the line over from this one to this one. We'll hardly lose any fluid, which would be nice. So let's tighten this down and then we'll switch the line over and we're almost done. Well. The tow truck is done. It's all done. Get this piece of junk out of here. The tow bitch is here. The tow bitch is here. N-I-N-J-A. <laughs> hey, you got work to do, buddy. I do got you work to do. You better go get her done. Look, get her done. Get, get her, her done. Andy. No problem. Diablo Formula <laughs> Racing. <laughs> it's been a long freaking day. Be careful. Hey, be careful, buddy, all right? Be safe, baby. Yep, see ya. Well, there she goes. She works perfect. Stupid duper happy. Holy smokes, that door being open back there sucked. Current temperature. What's the current temperature? I was working in outside. Well, 34 degrees. That's not too bad, guys. It's not too bad. Oh, man. All right, well, truck's done. It's out of here. It's like almost two o'clock in the morning um whoo what a what an evening let me tell you guys what an evening but at least now you know how to do um rear brakes on a tow truck if that's really what you're interested in um a little shout out here to the guy driving the tow truck he's not the owner but he's my buddy's employee and um he does this slow down move over uh thing um he has a youtube and a uh instagram and all that stuff at town ninja 68 so you can go follow him he does a lot of uh 
basically a lot of like tow truck advocate stuff for emergency vehicles basically basically just making sure everybody stops for these guys and doesn't hurt them on the road because unfortunately the truth of the matter is guys a lot of tow truck drivers and emergency personnel cops firefighters construction workers stuff like that get hurt and killed every day because people don't pay attention while they're driving, they're on their phone, they're talking to this person or talking to that person and goofing off and it's just very, very unsafe. So he does that, which is pretty cool. It basically brings awareness to the uh, emergency services community out there and letting people know, hey, watch out for those guys on the side of the road. They're doing good. Don't hurt them. But other than that, guys, I am tired. I'm gonna go home and that's the end of the video. But if you did enjoy this video and I hope you did. Please do me a favor, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Instagram, Diablo Formula Racing. Hit that notification bell as well and put it on all. And of course, down in the description below is all my sponsors links, discount codes, and all that fun stuff. So go check them out. Support the people that have supported me in this channel throughout the years, please. And thank you and deuces guys.